Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, mesh data and mainly mesh data in QGIS. Can you hear me all well? Oh, okay, cool. Um, about us, we are Lutra Consulting. Uh, we are a core contributor to QGIS. Some of the features you might have seen, like QGIS 3D, mesh data, point clouds, and merging maps, we have uh, developed it all open source. And the uh, focus of today is uh, mesh data. Uh, what is mesh and why we need that, the structure of data, uh, how it looks like, and uh, the library, and then the um, data formats, and how you can use it in QGIS from the user point of view. So what is mesh? Uh, mesh, it's uh, data that it's not on a regular grid. Uh, it's not about point cloud, I uh, put yet, because there is a convergence. We, if you are following a point cloud uh, uh, development, you probably have seen some uh, mesh representation of the point cloud in QGIS, which uh, uh, is available now, but uh, this one is slightly different, but there is a point where those two can converge. Um, about uh, uh, mesh data, you usually have, uh, in GIS, you have uh, vector data, where you have uh, geometry plus uh, database, point, line, polygon. Uh, you can use the vector data to represent it. Then you have uh, rasters, which you have uh, pixels, and then the values inside each pixels. It's regularly, regularly gridded. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, unstructured data which is more representative of the real world. And you have uh, uh, data either uh, interpolated or outputted from some numerical model, which are not uh, exactly on uh, very well-defined regular mesh. It can be a triangular mesh. It can be, oh, sorry. It can be a uh, uh, quad mesh or any dimension, and in addition to the data inside uh, or at the vertices of the mesh, you might have some sort of extra information, like vectoral information, if you think of the velocity for, from a uh, weather data that it's, uh, uh, you define the direction and the magnitude, so you can have this kind of data inside the mesh as well. And to make it more complicated, you have got also a time dimension to it as well. So this data uh, repeated and changes for each time step. Uh, there are some attempts to represent mesh in uh, GIS world, and usually uh, people um, uh, can't, to, uh, um, if you want to have it as a regular grid, you convert it to grid or you create uh, contours out of it uh, to represent it as vector. The problem with this is uh, uh, the data is already interpolated, and when you do this kind of conversion, you further interpolate the data more, and you add more um, uncertainty or more approximation to your data, and by the end, especially, for example, for weather data or uh, hydrological, hydraulic data, when you do this interpolation, because it's uh, uh, valid at a certain point where the numerical model has produced it, then this interpolation makes your whole data completely invalid. Let's think of a flood map. When you do the conversion, if you do the contouring or greeting incorrectly, suddenly you have got a whole bunch of properties in a flood map, or your temperature uh, will uh, show a different range in, uh, for a whole city if you deal with a large-scale uh, kilometer size grids. So, uh, to um, resolve that issue, what we decided was to create a library to read the mesh as is and present the data uh, at their own, um, uh, the values right where they are instead of trying to contour them or grid them. Uh, the mesh data usually have data on uh, 
cell or face or on each vertice. They are uh, with time dimension usually, and uh, you can have scalar data, vectoral data attached to it, and you can have multiple quantities. If you think of uh, uh, like a HDF or NetCDF, you have uh, a data set which contains temperature, humidity, um, uh, cloud coverage, uh, so you have multiple data sets inside that data container. Uh, in raster world, you'd handle it with bands, but in mesh data, you have got some sort of uh, quantity. So for that reason, we created a library called uh, MDAL, and uh, uh, what it does, uh, you have MDAL reads the mesh and visualizes it in QGIS, similar to uh, PUDAL that it reads the point cloud, or GDAL which reads the vector and uh, raster data and shows it in your... Um, uh, I'm focusing on QGIS because we are shipping QGIS with this library, but uh, it's uh, an open source library so you can use it with any other uh, viewer. Uh, the standards usually uh, for uh, this kind of uh, data set for grid data, uh, NetCDF or uh, UGrid, and uh, data, as I said, you can have uh, multiple versions of it. The, if you think of a regular uh, grid, raster data is a specific type, a particular type of uh, mesh data. Mm, and uh, you have... Uh, complex mesh data like this, that it changes based on the uh, topography, for example, in this case uh, where it represents. Uh, and uh, these are the information about uh, MDAL, where it's hosted, and it's, uh, it has become a, an OSGEO uh, project as of uh, last year. Uh, it has got uh, capability uh, to read and uh, uh, recently write mesh data uh, and it started uh, four years ago, so it has different. These are the type of formats uh, it can read and uh, it can write to a couple of those formats as well. Uh, some of the most commonly used uh, weather data uh, and if you are familiar with uh, uh, hydrological model or climate model. These are some of the outputs from there. Uh, these are uh, the, in addition to that, we, um, MDAL also indexes the data, so it helps for fast loading of the data. Uh, and uh, it has got lo lazy loading, so uh, as I mentioned, mesh data can contain uh, quite a lot of uh, time series, so uh, it indexed the data both spatially and also when you load it in QGIS, it only looks at the specific time step you are interested in. Or, uh, this is an example of mesh data in QGIS, so you load your data, uh, then you can uh, change the style of the data, uh, you can um, change the if it has got quantities, you can change the color uh, ramp similar to raster. Um, also, as I mentioned, mesh data can contain um, uh, vectoral components like uh, velocity. So you can visualize and animate the uh, speed uh, date of those vectoral components as well. This is uh, a vector, but you can have it as a trace as well like this, so you can create uh, trace animations. Um, so this, uh, yeah, this is uh, oceanographic data uh, and uh, the vectoral component of it, how you can style it. Uh, this is an example of, again, pollution data from uh, Copernicus, so you can, uh, uh, it has got, uh, built-in integration with the temporal management in QGIS. So if you have vector data, raster data, and mesh data all using the same data set, you can easily animate your data and see uh, the propagation or progress of your data. Uh, 
again, it's using the default uh, style of the data in your QGIS. If you are working with rasters, it should be very familiar for you. Uh, this is some examples of the flood data. Uh, Uh, in addition, we have got a mesh calculator. Uh, what it does, you can do very similar to um, raster calculator. So you can add uh, uh, or do all sorts of uh, uh, calculation with the mesh. In addition, you have uh, some aggregate functions. Let's say you have got temperature data and you want to uh, temperature data for whole uh, Europe and you want to uh, search for the, uh, or calculate the maximum aggregate for Firenze for uh, July. So you can do max aggregate and you can do spatial filter. So it does both temporal and spatial filter uh, to give you some aggregate functions. Um, uh, we have got also a plugin called Crayfish, so you can create uh, uh, plots of the data, uh, the time series, also the long profile. Uh, so you can see each color represent each of those graphs. Uh, we plan to add this plotting option now in QGIS directly, so you don't need the um, uh, plugin. Uh, and also you can visualize it in 3D. So mm, these are the different component of it, MDAL for data read and write, uh, QGIS for rendering and data editing, which I'll touch in a bit, and uh, Crayfish for visualization. In addition to 2D data, the focus so far has been in uh, 2D data. Uh, mesh data can also handle uh, um, uh, 1D data. If you think of uh, like pipe network, that's uh, can be 1D mesh data and it, uh, QGIS can handle it, uh, MDAL as well, and also, uh, oops, sorry, uh, two and a half D or stacked mesh. Let's say you have uh, temperature data uh, for each uh, uh, elevation. So you can uh, represent that and in 2D by some sort of method of averaging uh, between those. Uh, uh, heights, elevations. Uh, we have got uh, no plan yet for fully unstructured mesh data, but if you are interested, we can have a chat. Uh, yeah, animations of vectors and uh, ras uh, the grids I showed you. And uh, as of last year, we have added option to edit mesh data. So editing mesh data is a bit... Uh, complicated, but we have tried to achieve it in QGIS. Uh, what it does, you can edit the values on vertices, uh, split your mesh, uh, and uh, uh, do some sort of transformation uh, of the mesh. So examples of it, let's say you have a mesh like this, you can uh, uh, split it this way and it creates rectangular valid mesh data in this instance uh, and uh, transformation for moving the data and the moving it, if, if you haven't tried it uh, in QGIS, so there are some nice animations. When you drag a mesh vertice, it drags all the vertices with it so you will get a topologically correct mesh data at the end. Um, and. Uh, uh, it re-indexes mesh, so if you delete a face or uh, um, add a new face, uh, the whole mesh will be re-indexed and uh, again your mm, topology will remain valid. Um, the features we would like to add is uh, data streaming. Uh, as I said, the, um, the mesh data can be extremely large. So what we would like to have some similar to uh, cloud-optimized TIFF or um, COP-C or whatever the name is. Howard is not here, so I can. So, 
Gap C, yeah, we can stream the data up, uh, eventually. If, uh, so if you deal with, um, uh, for example, at the moment, what uh, weather organizations are doing, like ECMWF or WMO or um, Canada recently, the weather center I've seen, they uh, uh, stream the data through WMTS, WMST, yeah? so that you have got a WMS with the time component. So what they do, they convert their net CDF or grip data, the conversion I mentioned, and then they create uh, an OGC service based on that, uh, which by the end for visualization it's good, but if you are handling the, if you want to work with the data and query the data, let's calculate the maximum, clip the data, etc., it's uh, completely useless. So with having some mesh streaming that allows you to uh, uh, achieve that. Uh, more formats and standards uh, uh, and some Python or R API so you can do your statistic easily through those uh, uh, popular uh, languages and uh, we have done point cloud to mesh data to some extent only for visualization if you are uh, you have looked at the recent QGIS but it would be good to have some sort of proper tool, uh, processing tool, which my colleagues will uh, talk about shortly, and it will handle all the point cloud filtering, and by the end you have a mesh data ready for your numerical model for uh, things like hydraulic model, climate model, etc. So, that's it, and I hope you have lots of questions and I can answer them.